Welcome along to another video presentation from the Computer Information Agency. My name is Robert Crane and in this session we'll look at uploading files to SharePoint. So what we'll be looking at in this session is firstly how to upload single files, then multiple files, and then how to achieve the same results using map drives. first place we start to upload files is in a browser, so we simply browse to our SharePoint site, which you can see displayed here. We then go to our document libraries, and this is our document library with a number of existing documents in it. To upload a single file, I simply go to the upload menu, which is up here on the menu bar, select the word upload. I can then select browse to nominate and locate the file on my local system in this case a file called books.xlsx, select that and then go open. You'll see that the full path name is transferred to the location here. I can also choose whether to overwrite any existing file. In this case I'll leave that checked. Once I'm happy with these options I select the OK button to continue and you'll see that this file called books is now uploaded to my SharePoint site. Again, I can pull this down once the document is in there and edit its properties and manage permissions and so on. To upload multiple documents, again, I go to the Upload menu, but in this case, what I do is select the arrow to the right of the word Upload. If I click on that once to pull down a drop-down menu, you'll notice that I have an option here called Upload Multiple Documents. Simply select that, and I'm now presented with a Windows Explorer-style interface that allows me to navigate through all the drives on my local machine and select files I wish to upload. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload these three files which are new, not in the document library, and this fourth file which actually does already exist in the document library. You'll notice that I've selected the option to overwrite the existing files, so this means that because this document already exists that when the upload happens it will overwrite the existing version. So once I'm happy I select the OK, I'm prompted with a message to confirm that I wish to continue uploading these four files. I go yes, you'll see that they basically begin to transfer and I'm returned to the SharePoint site. Immediately you can see that three new files here are at the bottom, one, two and three. And you'll also notice that the fourth file which already existed as mentioned before actually now has the same date and time. So again, I've uploaded four files into this document library and overwritten one that already existed. To do a map network drive I need to return to my local workstation, in this case Windows XP. I select Start, My Network Places. I then go to the top left up here and you'll notice that there's an option called Add a Network Place. I select that to commence the wizard. So I go Next. It will do a little bit of checking and then give me some options. In this case I only have a single option to connect to another network place, so I select Next. I'm now prompted for the address of the network place. In this type case, I will enter the URL of the document library on my SharePoint site and then select Next. If any login credentials are required, then these would pop up and ask me to authenticate to the SharePoint site. In this case, I don't need to do that. What I'm now going to do is going to give this network a load a name so it makes it easier for me to identify. I then go next and you'll notice that I have an option here to open the network place when I finish. I'll leave that checked. So if I now finish I should now see a list of all the documents in this network place which is pointing to my SharePoint document library. You'll now see that all the documents in my document library have been displayed. So in this case you can see that there are a total of nine documents if I return to my document library just to check that, you'll see again that is correct. I have those same nine documents in there. So again, once I have mapped this network place, I can close out these locations here. Now, if I then browse my network through Windows Explorer, you can see that under Network Places, I have the option here for my SharePoint documents. If I select that again it opens them as any normal file and folder. So now that I have map network drives what I can do is I can for example take information from my local C drive in this case and then drag and drop it directly on to the network place which represents my file 
my files on SharePoint. So again, I've just copied the document called WS Blackberry Orphans. If I go to my SharePoint document library and have a look in this folder now, I should see that document appear. And as you can see in this case, you will see that this file WS Blackberry Orphans does appear in the SharePoint documents folder. And now if I return to my web interface and refresh the page on the document library, I should now also see that that document also appears in the graphical user interface. So again, here is that document here, WSJ Blackberry Orphans. The way network drives are mapped in Windows Vista and Windows 7 are slightly different from Windows XP. So we'll just do that now. To map a network drive to a SharePoint location in Windows 7 or Windows Vista, the first thing you'll need to do is to run Windows Explorer. So run Windows Explorer. Then on the left hand side you'll need to select computer. Once you select computer you'll notice that a option map network drive appears in a menu bar under the address line at the top. Simply select that. Choose the letter with which you used to map you want to map the drive to. So in this case I'll leave it as Z. And then example and in the folder I simply type in the SharePoint site as I did before. and simply choose whether I wish to reconnect it, log in, or use different credentials. Once I've entered that information, I push the finish button. I'm now prompted for um, authentication to that site. Once I've entered those credentials and pressed OK, you'll see that the drive is now mapped. If I now expand the computer option here, you'll see under the computer I have an option here, which is dav www root and then the SharePoint site and then the drive letter that I've allocated to. So again I can simply use this folder structure once I've mapped to it and navigate to my shared documents folder and again copy and paste files as I would normally with any other Windows folder. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation from the Computer Information Agency. I'd also ask that you remember our SharePoint Operations Guide, which is the most comprehensive guide on how to use, install, migrate, and maintain Windows SharePoint. More information about this can be found at the site www.wssops.com. If you have any questions or any feedback about what you've seen here today, please feel free to contact me via director at ciaops.com or via my blog supportweb.ciaops.net.au forward slash blog. Thank you very much.